turning to talk about having women at the table and women's perspective. Um, I remember a, a speech that I did once, I think maybe for a B2, BPW or something, and I said, well, mm -hmm. it's Women's History Month, and all over the county we have bulletin boards, Women's History Month, and we have a few people. We have, you know, Claire Barton, and we have, um, we have uh, Harriet Tubman, and we have Martha Washington, and we have... But, you know, what we don't have is the typewriter. Now, how many of you think that the typewriter is really an important part of women's history? And then we go into, um, it was one of the first kind of acceptable white collar jobs. And in the beginning, it was thought that only men could operate the typewriters. And then when the Civil War came along and the men all went off to war, the women were taught how to use a typewriter. And they kind of, you know, it, it kept growing as a female um, field. And really? then um, then it became not only this, um, this avenue for um, for freedom for girls who otherwise would have no other way of earning a living except to do housework you know mm -hmm. work in somebody else's house um, it came became this this you know the pink collar ghetto right. that those in the 70s were kind of complaining about and why are women stuck behind the typewriter not having any realization that the typewriter had at one time been regarded as something very progressive and liberating, liberating and mm -hmm. uh, economically empowering for women. So that's a kind of example of when you talk about women's history, yeah, you get a different perspective when you, yeah. when you look at it from that like that. And sort of how you get, you know, you get a you get this chunk of sort of your liberation working. Mm -hmm. You get used to it. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> more and more people it. kind of come into that way uh -huh. of living as just an accepted thing in the culture. And then whichever, you know, any oppressed or restricted group eventually runs into that ceiling and looks around and goes, well, but I can do that too. Yeah, right. And I can do that. And I've been typing all your speeches for years, <laughs> you know, and one. you can, <laughs> and then they want to go another yeah. step, you know? Yeah. Well, my, my piece of, of most, the most liberating thing in my own life, I think would have been permanent press. When I think of all the hours that my mother used to spend ironing and I'm not even sure where my iron is anymore. Mm -hmm. and, so that, mm -hmm. that, it's things like that, inventions like that, that have made an enormous amount of difference for yeah. in women's life. Now, on the other hand, uh, there also was a period where a lot of these quote, quote, labor-saving inventions came on the market, but instead of liberating, they just made the standard of, of housekeeping and cleanliness and hygiene and higher and higher, higher and higher and mm -hmm. added more work. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to look at both sides. But the point is that it, that's that's part of women's history. Yeah, <laughs> uh, being a um, having been a social studies um, major at my master's level, I always, of course, was really interested in working with the social studies people. I like that. Yeah, that, that was really good. I think it's yeah. one of the most important parts.